Well, hello, Coffee Time friends. How are you? It's been a busy few days here at the Davis House. We are canning and preserving, which is what you do. You plant, you can, you preserve for the winter. Bring in the harvest and put it up. Mama is canning green beans. Now, these are not our peanut beans. These are some white half runners. Mama, tell us what you're up to. I'm a filling my jars with these beans. A friend of mine brought these to me, what, last night? I think so. And uh, he said, here's your good mess of green beans. They're white half runners. And uh, I reckon it was a good mess because this makes the ninth pint that I'm filling and I'm still gonna have enough for me and Johnny to have for lunch. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, his messes is a big messes. Big messes. He must come from a big family like me. And you see how beautiful they are? They are beautiful. They hardly had any bug bites, and they're the biggest things. And they were big, I thought, for white half runners. So now what are you doing there? You're just putting I'm packing clean the jars. jars just like I did the peanut beans. And uh, all I'm going to do now is. Uh, I'm going to fill the jars with some warm water as I can because I've got my canner on with water getting warm in it. And then I'll check the, the rims like this when I get the water in, put my leads and rings on it, and then I'll place it in the canner. And then I'll pressure it for, uh, it says 10 pound pressure for uh, 25 or 20 minutes for pints 10 pound pressure for 25 15. well i do 15 but the book says 10 for each one and 20 minutes for pints and 20 minutes for quarts but what i've always done is i pressure mine on 15 pound pressure for 20 minutes for pints and 25 for quarts but you've got to keep your eye right on that canner and that's what I do. So I've got my nine pints. This canner that I've got holds nine pints or seven quarts. So I'm canning these in pints because if we have a big meal and just have green beans as a side dish, we don't need a whole quart sometimes. So I'm planting these nine pints. So that's all I'm going to do now is just I'm going to fill it with water put the lid on, check it like this, put the flat on it and the ring on it and set it in the canner and okay. let it go. Well, we'll let her get her some water and we'll fill them right up. So that's what I'll be doing. Okay, I filled my jars with fil filtered water. It's a little hard for me to get out. And I've wiped the tops of them off, you see, with a damp paper towel here. Make sure they're clean. Rinse my lids good, wash them off, and all I do is put them on and that's one of them stubborn ones that don't want to go on started straight. And all I'm doing is doing them that way. Stepping out of the camera <laughs> Now one thing about these, these jars are reused year after year. You save your jars, you clean them. Uh, save them, then run them to the dishwasher to sanitize them. The lids are always brand new. The lid is just that flat. You always want to make sure you get brand new lids if you're going to can, because you don't want to waste your time canning if you're not going to have brand new lids. But the ring can I be use used year on. after year. Unless there's a dent or something that would keep it from sealing, that's the only thing that you wouldn't uh, use a ring for well, so, you get it. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm going to the stove to set these in the canner. So if you can follow me, please. Okay, we're over here at the stove. And Mama, what are you up to now? I've got the lids and rings on these two right here, those fixed. And I'm just setting them in the canner. That's all I'm doing. I've got the water uh, hot. Well, it's good and hot. I've got to get that one tightened some more. I just probably put the lid on that one. 
and that's all I'm doing is getting them What's in. What's this little thing you're using here? It's a jar lifter. I guess that's what it's called. That's what I call it. And, uh, Awful handy, ain't it? Yes, and I used to get a rag like I've got here, a dish towel, and, and just pick them out of that boiling water when the pressure goes out and took the changes until I found them one day. Some woman told me about it, and I went and got me one. And you talk about safer. It sure is safer than the way I've always done it. Didn't know they had nothing so fancy as this years ago. Didn't know if they even had them in. And that's all I'm going to do. And then I'll, when I get these in there, uh, I'll put the lid on it. And then when the pressure gets up on it, I'll uh, pressure it for 20 minutes. And... And then I start letting the temperature down, but you got to stay right with it, and I just keep cutting it down and down because you don't want it to uh, get up above 15 because it will could explode and stuff. How much water do you put in there, Mom? I keep I put the water about halfway up on the jars. Now I know the canning books don't say that, but I like. Uh, the water up our better because I'm afraid if it gets dry it'll break. Uh, so I just fill the canner up to where it'll be about halfway up on the jar. Get some more water here. And I forgot to get me a dish towel to put in there. So. It's about done. I'll get one of these right here. All right. So water is halfway up on the pint jars. Same with quarts. You just have seven in there instead of nine. You just put the water halfway up on them as well. And what you uh, do, I do this. And like I said before, I don't know if you should do it or you shouldn't or what. But I've, that's my way of doing it and I've done it this way for years when I've got pints ooh that water was a little warm <laughs> when I've got pints I put that dish towel around there to keep them from jargon and hitting each other because you can see there's quite a bit of space in there when you put quartz it's not that way it's tight on your canner or at least on mine right here there's a close and op you know, a open and close thing and uh, this is my lid, and Johnny did order me a new gasket. And I always make sure that this right here, you can see through it, and I can. I've checked it earlier anyway. And then I just, you put this handle right past this uh, handle back here. And you'll see it'll go fit in there. But this with this new gasket, it's a little bit harder to get turned. Which is a good thing because it don't fall out. And then I'm going to turn the heat up a little about medium ways or a little more till it starts getting hot. And then I'll gradually turn it up and right here's the gauge. It's on zero now and uh, I'll put this little jigger, or well, I don't know the proper name for it either, on here. If I can get it on there. And then when the pressure starts rising, first of all, you'll see this little rubber gasket. It also come new when the gasket he bought is. So this is new and the gasket's new. This, see, it moves now. And when the pressure starts rising in it, it will pop. You'll see it pop up. This little metal center part will pop right up. And when it pops up, then this pressure will start building. It's got 0, 5, 10, and 15 right there. You don't never want it go over in this black at all. So if it goes past 15, you start cutting your stove down really fast and keep it regulating. And you stay right with it until that pressure gets back to 0. And when it gets back to 0, then you can take this off and take your jars out. Don't rush it. Let it go all the way to zero. Yeah, make Because sure you will cause your jars to instantly boil and they'll boil dry. Uh, and it's not and a good And if you thing. let the pressure off with this, I've never done it, but they say it will 
Make the jars bowl. It'll suck the water out of your jars or or draw it out of your jars so uh, and mess them up. So that's all I've got for right now. Okay, we'll be back when it's done. Okay, this uh, gauge is on zero now. So I'm going to take the jigger thing off and you hear it ain't nothing coming out. So I'm going to try to get this lead to come loose. Okay, it's unlocked. Take it till it's, hold it this way so the steam won't come back on you. <coughs> show you I'll take out the middle one first and let you see it and it's pretty beans I'll set them down here and then I'll set them over on my rack now them's wild high runners or that's what the man told me they sure turned out really pretty didn't they Johnny they did Everything's off and cooling down. Now I just set them over here on my rack and let them sit there overnight and stuff and see if they seal. And uh, that's all they are to this cannon. And I've um, got one more jar in there. And they're still boiling in the jar. Yeah, you can hear them soon. <laughs> See them boiling all over. And that's it. And so this whole process took about an hour and 40 minutes or so. Yeah. Okay. That's with the beans already broke. With the beans already broke. But just canning them and getting them where you want them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's white half runner cannon. Just like the uh, peanut beans that we canned. So process was the same. Beans mm -hmm. was just a little different. So we'll say... Y'all make some memories and can you some beans, get you something good going. This is our last bean cannon of the year. And this is it. So, so uh, we'll be ready for the winter. Yes. All right. So that's all we got, folks. And y'all have a good night. And say good night, Mama. Good night, Mama. God bless you and all. Bye-bye.